Well, good day, everyone, and welcome to uh, another episode of Grazer's Freshwater Fishing. Um, going to do something a little bit different today. Um, pissing down rain outside, so we're going to take the opportunity to install the new Lowrance Active Target, um, which I just picked up recently. We're going to ex mount it to the bow, just off to the side, just here, um, using one of these um, transducer poles, um, which I picked up by uh, CH Smith online, um, which is really good. Um, ordered it, it was here in a couple of days, which is great. Um, and we're going to install it with a ram mount off to the side, just with the D size ball, which I also picked up from CH Smith. Um, yeah, just off the side here. Really like the idea of doing this, so that way we can sort of um, deploy it, store it, um, keep it out of the way when we're travelling with a nice real heavy duty ram mount, which you sort of can't go wrong with that. Um, Got to hook it up straight to the Lowrance. Um, I'm running um, two FS uh, Elites on my boat. I've got a seven um, just on the console here. Um, just running a seven there and then going to be running, um, which I'm currently running a nine, um, which is networked back to my transducer off the back of the seven. So we're just going to run the active target straight into the, the FS9 on the front here. Um, yeah, and let's, um, let's unbox this, this beast and um, go from there. Pull it out of the sleeve. Um, yeah, it's really great to see someone like the Rants being mindful of their impact on the environment, which is um, great. Um, so, manuals, um, Ethernet cable is the main unit or computer whatever you want to call it um, which we need to find a suitable spot to locate that in the boat um, transducer um, which is obviously needs to connect to the pole um, this will connect back to our, our module um, back here which we'll go through through the process um, heap of brackets, um, power cable, brackets, brackets, brackets. Um, we'll go through uh, uh, which ones we're going to use as part of hooking up to the pole, which we'll go through shortly. Um, a few bits and pieces, pieces, nuts and bolts, that type of thing. Then. That's, um, that's pretty well it. So one of the first things we're going to do is look at where we're going to mount a suitable spot to mount the transducer and the transducer pole. As mentioned before, I'm going to use this rather large D-ramp, which has got the D-size um, mounting plate or ball, which are great for sort of moving around in all sorts of different angles. Um, we have the main ball which we need to find a suitable location take that out find a suitable spot where I'm just going to mount it on the gunnel um, doing that so this will slide up over the pole or over the side rail and then I can sort of switch it back um, back install it inside the boat so it's not going to be damaged if we're traveling um, 
either out on the water or on the road. So um, we'll get into it. Okay, so I've taken the, the ball mount, which connects to the ram, um, found the spot where we're going to locate that. Um, just need to make sure when we drill into the gunnel here, uh, there's nothing that's going to interfere underneath. So just a case of getting having a good look, having a feel, um, depending on your boat will determine um, the best location for that. Um, so yeah, we're just going to drill in and um, get that mounted and, and sort of work back from there. Yeah, as mentioned before, just really important that we get the position of this D-ball mount right. Just make sure you have a good look under your ball and under your gunnel. Just make sure there's nothing that's giving into fear. So I've sort of marked my position here, um, where I want it to go. I'm just going to mark, um, obviously, first hole. Uh, get that drilled, get that screwed in, tightened up, and um, we'll go from there. that in there just hit that bolt there just to make sure it's in position um, we'll just mark the hole spots for yellow holes while it's sitting there Obviously, just really important, you've got a high speed drill. And there we go. All secure. Okay, now that we've we've got the DM ball located, we've hooked it up to our round mount, we've connected it to our transducer pole. And now we just bring that over to the side, put it in position, screw up the, D, the, the ram mount. We can adjust the height using the, the screw on the back, like so. Just give it a bit of a tighten so we can still move our transducer to the position that we want. To give you another look from a different angle ultimately what we're trying to achieve with the pole um, a transducer will get located on the bottom of the pole shortly um, it's the ramp all nice and snug and secure perfect so as mentioned before, in the box, uh, we have a number of different brackets. Um, obviously we're going with the pole, so we can use the Minn Kota or our electric motor off the front and still be able to move our transducer to target fish. Um, so in the box, we have a number of different brackets. This is the one we're gonna be using, which is, um, our pole bracket which will go through how we're going to install that one in a sec um, and then there's a number of different brackets that are included in the kit um, for installing straight to your trawling motor um, which I'm not going to spend any time on that today um, because yeah we're gonna we're gonna hook ours up to the pole and then see our transducer um, the cable um, which we're going to feed back through the pole in in a sec. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to feed 
the transducer back up through the pole. We'll do this. So straighten this cable out. Okay, so we're just going to feed this back up through the pole. Go all the way through. Yeah, see, so it becomes juicer. That round to go. Okay, so we're ready to install the bracket and to install the transducer to that bracket. So we have our bracket. Uh, we're just going to um, loosen these off so we can in a position where we can connect it up to the pole. Um, as you can see, there's two rubber little inserts here, um, which will help with the mounting. As you can see, we've got that mounted here, the bracket position, so it's sticking forward from the pole and it's not in behind the bottom of the pole it's going to be sticking out forward um, that bracket's in scout mode at the minute but that's fine we'll get a hook up um, the transducer now to our bracket once we tighten off these tighten off these allen keys ah uh, allen screws so as you can see We've got our bracket mounted to our pole. Um, now we're just going to hook up the transducer to our bracket. Really important to make note of this little notch here, um, which we're going to use to line up our transducer. Okay. I'm just going to grab this. Now line up this notch. I'm going to grab our little bolt and little washer. Got our little notches here. Put that in. Making sure the cable's coming back, it's pointing back towards the pole. This is forward with this little offset pole here. Brackets pushing forward, cable going back into the pole, um, which makes sure that it's not going to be in the way of the transducer. We've got all that slotted in. And I'll do now as that can be turned to position it with that notch which is just here which enables you to turn that into scout mode so there's a couple of notches here which you just got to follow um, takes a bit to get used to um, but once you sort of get out in the water you get a better understanding of it. Anyway, it's just really important that we've got a bit of slack here 
So when we are turning from forward to down to scout, um, that this isn't isn't going to get caught or, or or be too tight. Now we're just going to position this just to see how it all looks. back that being forward that's pretty good give it a tighten there as you can see we've got this little bracket here which sort of sets our height which will um we'll spend a bit of time on that and we can adjust that just with a simple allen key once we're out um, give you a look at how the, the transducer sits as you can see Dogs are comfy. Um, yeah, so we have our transducer currently in scout mode. Um, it's looking good. Cord going up through the pole, connected to our ram mount, which has been installed to the gunnel, up to the top, which is sort of coming out the top. We're going to run the cable back via um, just in behind the little grommet, which is going to come back through in under. So I'll explain how I do that shortly. So, what we've got left to do, we've got our module, our Ethernet cable. Um, and our power. Um, so we're just going to find a suitable spot for the for the module. Um, hook up our power cable, um, and then run our Ethernet um, from the module back into the back of our sounder. You'll see in the manual that's provided. Um, which is obviously in the box. Um, probably just want to spend a little bit of time just on um, having a quick read through, but um, yeah, there's a piece on the wiring. Obviously, our module, our Sino module, um, cord running to the transducer, and we have our Ethernet cable, which is going to run from the module all the way back into my. MF, uh, my Elite FS9 um, and then we have our cable running back to our battery. Also, also there's a piece in here, just read the cables. Um, we have a red, a blue, a yellow and a black. As you can see in the booklet here, um, our blue we don't have to worry about. Um, a yellow is our like standby wake up. Our red is our positive, and our black is our negative. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to connect our red and yellow together, um, which will run to our fuse box. Um, and obviously our black is our negative and we'll just disregard the blue. So for mounting, we're going to install our unit just inside here. Um, we'll have the cables, we'll, we'll stick it on an angle so we've got our cables. So they're coming out from one side. And the advantage of doing it that side too is we're nice and close to our our fuse setup um, so we'll have plenty of cable um, for our installation so in the installation box there's um, a little bag active target 
box keep in the box in this little bag. Um, we have a little fuse adapter. You stick the splayed in um, if you want to run that separately. A um, few screws here, um, which we're going to use to um, install our, our module. Um, a couple of little um, plugs here to go either side or joiners to go either side of the fuse if you decide to do that. Um, but we're going to do it a little bit differently in the sense that we'll use these four screws to install the unit. Um, we're going to run it back to our fuse box, um, which will use the fuse provided and um, install so we won't need that separate unit. But that's totally up to you how you choose to do it. So what we're going to do um, for the installation of the module is um, using some cardboard out of the box. We're just going to create a little stencil, which is going to assist with the drilling or the pre-drilling and just making sure we've got a suitable location underneath the boat. There we go, it's all mounted. I've set it up this way so the cables, uh, the majority, well all the cables are going to be fed to the right, so it just makes sense. Um, unit will operate no problems at all regardless of whether they're pointing down or out to the side. Um, obviously the power ethernet and the sonar, all the cables are going to run um, power up around back to the fuse box Ethernet will run up back to the FS9 which will be located at the bow and then obviously the sonar um, cable coming back through and the plan is that there's a bulk all the excess bulk um, cabling um, will store just off to the bow the right hand side of the bow here um, out of the way um, there we go. So we'll start running the cables, um, hook our power in, and we'll go from there. So, just at, I've got located at the front of the boat here is just a little hole where I've accessed um, all my cables. Um, currently got um, the power for the for the fish finder, uh, Ethernet running back to me. Um, lead FS7. Um, so what I'm going to do is the cable from the transducer, which is coming from the pole, slide back through here, excess cable is in under, under the bow here, run it back to the module, and then I've unraveled the ethernet, which is going to run to the module, um, and obviously back up to the finder. So we'll get that organised. I use these quite a bit when installing um, cables. It's just a little self-adhesive. Self um, just peel it off. Stick it to the aluminium, painted aluminium. You can just stick a little cable tie in through the back, put your cable in and just hook the cable up, um, put the cable through and um, make sure not to do it too tight so it's still got room to give. Um, really good, really good option for organising your cables. When installing the power cable, um, be mindful, um, it's only about two metres long, so, <clears throat> so be mindful of where you put your module 
as a comparison to your power source uh, with only two meters um, yeah not a huge amount of options without going to the extent of um, extending leads but anyway that's totally up to you hence why I've put my active target module nice and close to my power box so I'm just gonna go sort of spread of the wires there gonna go and connect my red to my wake up yellow just gonna solder them together just for a better connection um, and then my black and I'm just gonna eradicate the blue Another quick tip to you guys, if you're planning on doing a bit of work on your boat, a bit of wiring, um, make sure you get yourself a good pair of wire cutters. Um, and even with the joins, lugs, that type of thing, um, with all your terminal connections, um, you can buy the kits and the packs, which you can get cheap, which I find are useless. Um, always go to a J car or somewhere like that. Um, spend a little bit more and get the ones that are specifically suited um, to your needs. And you'll find that they won't buckle or crack or split when crimping with a decent set of pliers. So we're just gonna go ahead and crimp our negative. drop a bit of solder on the tip where the wire comes through so just got a bit of heat sink on there does the job nice and secure together as you can see we've got the yellow and the red connected as one now I'm just going to use this yellow terminal it's a little bit thicker which is going to let the thickness of the red and the yellow join together just going to stick that there just got enough of the wire coming through so I can just drop a bit of solder in the end there. Just crimp that. Bit of heat sink and that off the lighter. It's nice and secure. There we go. And nip that blue one off. And there we have it. A black wire to our negative. And now red and yellow joined together in a nice secure terminal.
and we're ready to go and install it. Before I go and hook it all up, I'm just going to turn off the isolator switch, make sure the power is turned off. Um, so I'll hook this up, um, hook it back to the module, and then I'll, I'll power the unit up. Okay. So got our fuse, which came with the kit. It's a little five amp fuse. Um, I'm just going to locate it here. Okay. So we've got our bus cable, just our bus module here, um, which we'll hook into. Um, and we'll see, we've just got our fuse here which will connect into here. Okay, and we've got a nice secure, nice secure fit in there. I've had a few people ask me about this. Um, oh, I just got a bit of melamide board. Um, um, boat, when I brought the boat, didn't have an isolating switch in there, so I've just hooked that up. Um, yeah, which is a sort of, Put the isolating switch running back from the alt battery. Um, obviously got two batteries in the boat, um, but hooked up the fuse panel, the bus panel, isolator switch, which is connected to a, a you see off to the side there, um, a King's unit. Um, just turn this isolating switch. I haven't got the module hooked up, but these rod holders um, here are actually screwed in. That's what's holding that board in. And then I've just stuck one of those Kings units um, off to the side here, um, which is great for hooking my fridge up while I'm out in the boat and power any sort of USB devices. But yeah, it works perfectly. So the actual rod holders there are holding the actual unit in. Okay, we've got it all fired up. Power's hooked on, we're just about to turn it on. So we'll just, just show you underneath. So there's the unit. Um, as you can see, I've sort of neatened up the wires. Sonar cable bill going to the front, Ethernet going to the front, and the power cable all locked in, going across. Along the top there, just needed it, needed up there with just a few cable ties, and just back to the junction box. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. So we'll turn the power on, and we should see green lights on our module. Sure, looking good. So time to tidy up. The cables towards the front, hook it up, hook the sonar up, and just go through all the updates. So we've got all the cables ready to go. So we're just going to hook it up to the back of the, the rants, remembering as indicated before. In Ethernet with the yellow label is the Ethernet for the active target and we have our power for our finder so once again our two slots just make sure they line up again Ethernet into the back And then you have your notch for your traditional sonar, which I don't use that. I just run it straight from my the back of the boat using the triple shot off the Elite FS7, which is on the console. So I'm just going to tighten that up. I just have mine mounted on the rail blaze little mount here so you can turn it lock it and um, 
lift it out if you're traveling. And that's all hooked up. Time to fire it up. Alrighty, eh? So I'll fire the unit up. We'll just accept. Active target features have been enabled. We'll just click OK. We accept. Active target sonar has been discovered on your system. There are some important configuration steps to be completed before this feature is ready to be used. Configure now. Please select the water type. Fresh water for me. Active Tana Sonar is now ready to use. So there's our active target page. We'll hit that one. And there it is. Now that we've got it all hooked up, we're just going to check uh, to make sure everything's updated. So we're just going to hit the power button. Um, settings. We have systems. We'll just go down to about. Um, late nine, we go to support, check system for updates. And you can see the elite nine current version is 20.3 available version. So that's up to date and the active target is all good. So everything is up to date. Just a quick last check. So that's hooked up. So the Lorance FS9 sitting at the front um, with our pole and cable. Nice and neat. Just a look from the outside. Cable coming down. Just running behind the unit. Take that in there. And done. So there we go, fully installed Lowrance Active Unit, hooked up on my 420 Explorer Trophy um, on my Lowrance Elite FS units. If you liked the video, please like, um, please subscribe to the channel as I do plan on doing a number of trips over the next few weeks, testing out the units. Um, showing some results, hopefully providing some tips that might be able to help you out as, um, as I learn to use the unit. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you all shortly. Cheers.